Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome one and all of you back to the zone where, yeah, exactly, this, if, if you know exactly what sort of, like, happened, then, uh, this is gonna make things a little bit com a little bit complicated to explain, because even though Reality Zone got deleted, you know, just, I'll just make a new channel, and I just won't upload the videos that got my, uh, account terminated, that previous account terminated in the first place. It's really, really that simple. But that really doesn't like begin to start to explain exactly why I haven't like uh, got anything up, uh, did any uh, parts after 27 for the last two days. It's because, well, I've been a little bit busy. You see, I've had this, uh, this uh, boyfriend free girl here. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? She's called... Azul, Azul, Spanish. She was so good, they had to name her twice. Could you believe it? It's like, it's it's like it's so unbelievable, but it's a it's a real thing that's happening. I know, guys. The, the I, I I could I could I I could see just just the, the look on your face. You you just you can't believe it either. It is, as uh, they say. So hard to believe. Okay, now with that being said, now we can begin. Uh, last time, basically, we we saw uh, uh, Michael Snyder basically tell uh, Chris on no uncertain terms, you're not getting back in. So, let's see uh, where else Chris will not get into today. So, if you guys want to check out the original video, yada yada yada, part 28 in 3... Two, one, and... What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On May 13th, 2010, someone who called herself Daria Camacho announced herself in a blog post on the Wikipedia, claiming that she was a fan manager who was hired as a temporary sysop to help run the website until Christian returned from his hiatus. She proceeded to make numerous changes and additions across the site, in the interest of making the front page in particular more aesthetically pleasing and presentable to new visitors. She was apparently not an approved member of staff, as Chris continually reverted any changes she made to the site. Daria was later no. revealed to have been an alias of the sysop of the Asperpedia, Mal. On mm. May 15th, Chris recorded a video discussing the recent murder of the University of Virginia lacrosse player, Yardley Love. I understand recently that there was a girl who was uh, murdered at UVA by her ex-boyfriend. She was on the lacrosse team. It was very sad. Poor, poor woman, he just kicked the door in and banged her head against the wall, totally ruined her right side and right side of her head. I never, ever, ever, when you're talking about, I, well, again, from my own experience, but never, ever, if you're talking about someone who's just been murdered, ever use a word like ruined. That's just, that's just me speaking. She died from that. And then she, and then he took her computer, because apparently there was some, there was an email on there that he sent her. And he didn't want that to get out. Sure it got out by now. But it's very sad. Uh, and I, uh, hope that, and I hope that if they haven't done so already, that the lacrosse team for UV, for UBA wins in memory of that, in memory of that girl. And yeah, it was not an accident. It, it, it so that the uh, dude claims to say as it was. She'd get like 20 years in jail. 
You know what? I, it doesn't surprise me Chris would say something like that, but it also wouldn't surprise me if all this guy was to serve his minimum of 20 years. Before you know it, he'll probably be out on, let's say, 10 years uh, for quote-unquote good behaviour. I mean, again, I, I wish I would say that these sort of things that Chris would say is ridiculous, but no. Uh, you would not believe some of the people that do get released early or who do not get life sentences for stuff like this. I mean, again, I'm not very... Pro I, I don't technically would call myself pro-violence, but I am in favour of the death penalty because, listen, the punishment should always fit the crime. And whatever whatever, whatever fate is there, when you take somebody, you've got to be prepared that you've got to give up your own life as well. And 20 years is a long time, but dude, let, let's 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 face it now. It he 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 it, sh it should have been longer. That's why he deserves from that. All he deserves is 20 years, really. I I find that hard to believe, to be honest. And again, maybe that's just me. He deserves jail time and hard time. Banging rocks, making license plates. It's like a repay debt to society for the shock from this girl's murder. Okay, again, maybe, you know what, I'm, I'm going to literally label this as like Chris's ignorance, but pay debt to society by banging rocks and making license plates because how can you really repay de pay your debt to society after, after you've murdered someone? It's it's not the same as let's say uh, uh, as a bunch of stolen checks amounting to let's say ten thousand dollars. That sort of stuff you can repay because it's it's well it's money basically, and you can always repay money. You can always repay debt. You can't really repay for pay pay somebody's life if if that makes sense. Yeah, also the other events around the world. Uh... Yeah, it's on my mind right now, but I well, I do watch the news. Sure you do, and, Chris. And uh, when I have a thought about a recent event, I feel it's of uh, good talk of uh, worthwhile talking about, and I will. I will record it, and I will talk about it. And also, yeah, autism. I no no mention about that from my point of view. Apparently, uh, not not just. Uh, the fact that we are unable to social, unable to socialize, but at least from my point of view, uh, in a crowded, in a crowded event or section, very crowded, where it's not easy for me to get much attention, I, I just, I just likely tend to freeze up vocally. I, uh, I can pretty much uh, do body language for enough, but it's like, can't get a word out in my throat, even, not even as much as a hello. I am not a bad man. You gotta love how uh, this started off as Chris paying tribute, well... I say pay tribute, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure if what we just saw you can technically call a tribute. And then he immediately swaps the subject back to himself and says, I can't get much attention. Chris, you don't do that if you want to try and pay. That's why I'm beginning now to suspect that this is absolutely no way in any which way, shape or form a tribute because you don't just, you don't just suddenly change some tax and make it about yourself. That's... Very tactless, you might say. I am not. I have no intention of anything negative of that sort. Keep telling yourself that, Chris. See where that gets you. I'm just. I'm just damn shy from the autism, freezing me up. And I am working on that. I just need. I just need help from. I, I just need help from my from my real friends, real people, because I can't just expect women to fall into my lap like that. If it was that easy, then at this point, especially over the internet, 
definitely be an action of a troll. So I can tell I can tell a difference right there. Maybe paranoid. You did that trolls. You see, again, it's it, it's at this point where I'm now beginning to uh, suspect at the back of my mind that even if Chris was never found out on uh, the internet in 2007, his life would have been full of more excuses of any sort or well, of any kind. It's, it, it's, I feel like it was almost inevitable. Leave y'all with that for today and uh, wait till another day when I have another thought about recent events. Have a good day. On May 20th, Chris made a video mostly discussing his favorite comedians, notably wearing his new trucker style outfit. I just uh, started up this uh, video to uh, give y'all a little update by myself. <clears throat> you know, I'm doing well, so is my mom. And for your information, my father is alive and well, so that rumor is false. My father is alive and well. Let's talk about famous comedy people. Uh, Y'all know I like, uh, I, li I like, from class in the classics, uh, Lucia Ball. I know, friends. Let me find me a Benjamin girl. Are you tired of being down this, this? Do you put that party? Are you unpopular? Yeah, so all your problems is this little bottle. Find me a Benjamin. I don't know. I don't know who Lucia Ball is, so again, maybe that's just lost on me. And I also like Red Skelton. We're all going, okay, we're all going to the, uh... Again, same problem. We're going to the parade. We're going to the parade. We got a float that we. Now this float that we run, it looked like the back end of a Cadillac. But then something, and then something happened, and uh, we had, and we don't know what happened. But we went out of control and, uh, and crazy, and we ended up in the McGriffin Park late. Two ducks slid by, and one to the other and said, "Gertrude, who hatched that thing?" I also like Jerry Seinfeld. He's he's very funny. I watch his show every. I watch his show every day on TBS. You know, I would, I would, you know, I would definitely like to see this. You know, even as a video response from Jerry himself, his uh, view on autist, on autistic people, especially the high functioning autistics like myself. You know, and also think about this. I probably sound like Jerry Seinfeld. I'd probably sound like Jerry Seinfeld. You know, this could be a comedy routine for himself. You know, that he could do for autistics. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've just recently been introduced to this uh, autistic uh, boy, aut this uh, autistic uh, teenage boy here, and uh, and we and you know, I was introduced, so he opened up to me right away, and then I, and then later at like uh, and then later at this picnic, this community picnic, he, uh, I see him, I see him over there, and uh, he wants to find, he wants to meet himself a lady, so he's hanging out over there. I don't see him talking to the lady. She's just, uh, he's just uh, smiling and uh, being silent. I mean, he ain't gonna go anywhere unless he toss the, he does toss the ladies. But then again, that's part of the autism right there. He just uh, tends to blank out when he's not introduced to the people because he's scared of the uh, unknown. Are you sure it's it's are you sure it's that he's uh, Chris is scared of other people, or do you think women are just so repelled by? Uh... Chris's otherwise funky body odor, or the fact that some women are worried they're gonna, Chris is probably gonna eat them. T t take I t it's literally it's lit it literally could be one of I any multiple of those factors, but uh, I love how Chris is just so caught up in this this fantasy that just it kind of reflects reality in the sense that. It's kind of true what he's trying to say, but it's really something where he's going very specific about how he wants Jerry and Seinfeld, Seinfeld to do one about a, a whole routine about him. Yeah. I would, anyway, I would definitely like to hear uh, Jerry Seinfeld's uh, opinions and views or a comedy sketch about autistic people because I want to ask. Also, that wasn't comedy, Chris. There was no setup and there was no punchline. About that. Oh yeah. Also, you know another another Jewish dude I like that is, that that strikes me as funny is Brad Garrick. You know from Everybody Loves Raymond. Also uh, doing the guy from Till Death. He also actually starred in an episode of uh, Seinfeld I read where he steals Jerry's car. 
you know, and I have nothing against the Jewish people. I mean, they're people too, and I got nothing against the Jewish community. Oh my God. I mean, they have their views, and we have our views. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, they're all, they're all, they're people. You know what? I, I this is a hang up I have for people who are offensive towards Jewish people. So I, I, I they're not aliens, you know. They, they're not a completely different species apart from I, I, I haven't got time to go over that but uh, I'll just uh, continue where people no problem I know I, I said cross signals about that that has points oh hey you know another do I like Cor Larry the quote unquote cable guy gear in <laughs> funny dude you know he definitely could but he definitely had the trucker lift going from if he uh wasn't that big being the cable guy. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely think they would have, uh, the way he was dressed, they would call him Larry the Trucker Man. The trucker Man. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. Oh, and also, you know, speaking of impressions, uh, here's Pierre Cohen. Autobots. Transform. And roll out. Bumblebee, I need you to go and spy the Decepticons. Let's, let's the fuck is this video? Like, why are we wasting? Can I can I skip through this? Can I just skip through this? It's just, it's nothing. It's a video about app. It's it's Seinfeld. That's what it is. Jesus Christ. See what they're what they're doing over there. Oh God, that's more spot on, dead on. Pierre Cohen, right there. Anyway, I'll leave y'all with uh, that and those impressions. Until next, until another time, when I have another or whatever. Have a good day. Peace. On May 26th, Link Wikipedia was hacked by Mao and once again opened to edits from the public, vandalizing it and republishing the false troll-created Sonichu issue 11. Christian, feeling defeated, filmed a video the following day stating that he did not want to deal with the website anymore. Look, all you people there who are, all you people who mock me and torment me, you trolls. I'm sick and tired of having to deal with you. You do not need to be getting it, hacking into my crap and stuff. You do not need to be doing that. And you should never do that. I would never even do that. You couldn't figure out hi, Chris. That's why. I am trying to improve myself. I am working on myself in real life. I am not lazy. I am no. I am not so much a man child as I was before. And I am act and I am active within my community looking for new looking for new friends to talk to hang out with and talk to. And especially the women. I do not need to repeat myself. I am straight. But yet uh, but yet you keep do, Chris. You all you do is repeat yourself over and over again. Also, hang out with. He's nearly in his thirties, Chris. You, you, you should. You've got. There should be higher priorities at, at, at this point. I love women, and I just. It's just a shame they don't love Chris because of who he is, and everything else. I'm not going to be on the internet much because I have been turned off of the internet because of what because of the damn because of you damn trolls. Give me so many bad experiences of the internet. Real life is so much better than the internet. You know, you glue yourselves to your computers, every last one of you, and y'all are becoming autistic like. Stuff within your computers. Nobody, not, not too many people are socializing in real life anymore. They're just glued to their computers. And that is not a world that we do not need to live in. Technology is, suppo is supposedly supposed to improve our lives, make things easier for us. I'll yeah. tell you one thing that it is not... How's that working out for you, Chris? Because I can't see it. ...making easier. Being sociable in real life. You need to glue... You need to get yourselves away from your computers and your sheltered lives and go out and socialize in real life. Talk to people. Go find yourself. Go find your own sweethearts, or if you already found them, 
go go talk to them and and hang out with them and everything. I do not need to have to update myself on the internet. My good name is my own good name. Oh, for God. Oh, my God. Like. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious, but Chris giving dating advice? Really? And nothing on the internet will change that for fact. Everything on the internet may as well be considered false. If you really want to know the truth, you have to seem you have to talk to me in person, in real life. Because I am not going to be pushed around anymore by anybody on the internet. Anybody outside of this state, outside of my own, outside of my own world, on the on the internet through the computer. The only ones that I will associate with, and possibly trust, are those closest to me in real life. Good to know, Chris. Good to know. Computer heads, go get your own life away from the computer. People mean people on the internet, supposedly, is an improvement in relationships, but you know... That's... Uh, no, I'm not going to skip this, but... Jesus Christ, he is just... It's nothing. This is... This means nothing that Chris does not stick to it. He's not genuine about his own advice, so why should we be that genuine about it either? Maybe we should just call this part, part 28, the Seinfeld edition. You know what? I disagree. Heavily. Improvement on what socially? Nothing. We're best socializing in real life, talking on the telephone. We do not need the internet and emails. We've become, y'all have become slaves to your own damn thing. Think about it. Four days later, Chris posted a video clarifying the copyright situation concerning Sonichu. I am making this video to state a point. Firstly, well, I do not disown Sonichu or any of the rights. So therefore, the current use of it on what was the Wikipedia by Alan Bigton Larry and Vivian G is not official. I still maintain all rights of Sonichu. They do not. And the misunderstanding of the science rights being transferred to the Wikipedia is false. It's just that I gave the Wikipedia permission to display my work. I allowed that. But now that I have to given up the Wikipedia, and since I took and since I relinquished the Wikipedia, I took back all science rights with that. So therefore, I'm still the main owner of Sanchu. I have the copyright papers. So there. And trolls, you're not gonna get you're not gonna get me to go back online so easily. You scared me off of the internet. So there. You can go find somebody else online to pick on. Do you think I'm gonna come back? No. You have to what you have a long wait before you hear from me again. Or ever being able to lure me back. So there. You can quit pestering my friends as well to try to convince me to go back because they're for me of staying off of the air net. So there. Have a good day. Chris received a reply in the form of an update on the Wikipedia, which was now in control of the persons behind the Asperpedia. They posted a copy of Christian's Certificate of Copyright Registration, with an annotation stating that the document implied that Sonichu was created for use on the Wikipedia, which was purchased by Alec Benson Leary, meaning that Leary now owned the rights to Sonichu. Oh boy. On June 4th, 
Christian attended Friday's After Five, an outdoor concert event held in Charlottesville from spring until fall. During the show, he got drunk and then drove to the game place in order to take a picture of the owner, Michael Snyder, so that he could use the printout as a dartboard and shoot at his face. He arrived at the game and hobby store and quickly confronted Snyder, who was soon accompanied by two police officers who came from the nearby shopping center. Chris tried to drive away, but was chased down by Michael, who nearly got hit by his car, forcing Chris to stop. Snyder provided a brief account of the event in the form of a YouTube comment. Christian is in my parking lot right now being grilled by the police. He took pictures of my daughter and tried to run me over with his car. They witnessed this, and I bet they still do nothing about it. The police listened to his side of the story, made him delete any photos he had taken off his camera, and as Snyder had predicted, was allowed to return home with a warning. Christian decided not to tell his parents about this incident. Two days later, he posted a YouTube video telling his side of the story. At this uh, moment, I uh, have an understanding that there are. Actually, you know what? Let's 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 play a game here. Let's assume this is a uh, court scenario where Chris has to answer for the actions that he caused. Let's see what he what he comes out with. Let's see if this uh, will get him in any more trouble. Perceptions and rumors being spread about me, which uh, I would like to state very right off that rumors, very rumors about anybody, especially to make them look terrible, it's just not cool. But anyway, yeah. First off, I would like to state, I do not quote unquote, piddle my cats. I, I, the only parts that touch on them are their back and their heads. Nothing more. Just gonna let that hang there, so uh, we don't need to call animal control about this. Anyway, after that, let me tell you about uh, what happened uh, last Friday, the uh, 4th of June. Hmm. Okay, so it was after Fridays after 5, I went over to a bar and I had a bud. A bottle of bud. And, I put, and then I played some solitaire on my DS while, while, I waited to the, uh, while I waited to the hour. But then about about three quarters of an hour through, because I had a camera in my possession right then, I had the impulse of, hey, I'll go over there, I'll go over to the place and take a picture of Michael Snyder so that I can print it out later and use it as a dartboard. Yeah, okay, how well, how well do you think uh, this will hold up, guys? Because uh, again, the implications that Chris was had a drink of alcohol and then drove. How well do you think that's going to go down? And so then I drove over to the parking lot of the place in front of Staples. And then I made my way to the window to take a picture of him and nobody else. I was not alone there in front of the uh, window. There was another dude who was apparently on his side and recognized me. He wanted to start a fight, but in a fight, in a fight or flee, I decided to flee. So I went to my car, just went in and ran in and got Michael. And then Michael jumped in front of my car. He jumped in front of my car. He, in my fact, he jumped off the top of my hood. He was looming over my windshield. It was horrifying, so I backed my car up. I backed my car up. And I, and I backed it up to my, to my right. And I see that there was like a couple of police cars in front of me, so that was like the wrong way to go. I should have backed up the other way, but anyway. So to go you around You mean them, drove forward. I went to another aisle, and I drove through that. And then, so then I, then I decided to make a left turn, bad, bad, bad move right there, because he jumped in front of my car again, risking his own life. I could have been going top speed. He was lucky he didn't get hurt, as far as I know. But I did not run him over. Jumped in front of my car, so I back up. And then I tried going around. And then this, and then this woman, I don't know who, I do not know who the blank she is. She jumps in front of my car, so I stop again. And then I start backing up, and then I get stuck from behind, and then I'm trapped between the between police and 
Michael and whoever the hell. So in so in Chris's side of the story is that he was trying to escape. That's essentially what it was happening between either the police, Snyder, or this other woman. This paints a picture that Chris was trying to escape because he knows that Snyder already informed about the police before because Chris Chris should know fine well that this was a trespass because this was trespassing, and that it's liable for anyone to call the police when you have a trespassing notice against you. So. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if this, is, if in the case of the defense, this is uh, looking good, looking good. Tell this woman was. So then I sorted out with the police. Uh, they delete, they delete the pictures. And uh, and the woman, and then the woman, t the woman came to me right up front and accused me. Of things like you know, see, see naked pictures on me on the internet, and they accuse me of child pornography. I am not a pornographer of any sort, and any naked pictures of me on the internet were either tricked from me by the trolls, where they deceived me, or I was blackmailed. And there were a number of blackmailings, as the, as they have rat themselves out. On the quit on their website such as the Quickie or even the Encyclopedia Dramatica webpage. Anyway, uh, through and also uh, Michael just basically loomed into me and he said he just basically shouted from me, "You're dead! You're dead!" Right? If I had the right mind, I would send him, I would give him a charge of verbal, serve him a charge of verbal harassment. You, was this before or after you took pictures of his daughter as well, Chris? I, I straight up want to know. Also, because this is multiple, uh, vi well, one, the violation of the harassment order and the fact that allegedly Chris nearly tried to run over Michael Snyder because I don't particularly think Michael would have just screamed, you're dead, you're dead for no reason. I reckon he, if, if he was to shout anything to Chris, he would have been telling him to get out of the car because the police needed to talk to him. Because goodness knows how he would how he would address the police if the police came to him and said, "Get out of the car." Would he file harassment uh, charges against the police if they did that? But was already under trouble for "quote unquote" trespassing. Yep, he knows that. And then, so with that, I told the police about. I remind them, eventually. Of the of the trolls of the internet that have been going against me, so I warned them of websites such as the Wiki, and I named a troll or two. I'm not gonna say uh, who I named, but point. But the point is, the only pictures I was taking were of Michael Snyder. Nobody else. No children. I want to make that very clear. And also, I do not want any more rumors spread at all. It's bad enough you have to have ruined, you had to have messed up my once good name and have a transfer into real life, which may, which uh, I basically got that impression firsthand for practically the first time. So prove that theory. And it made me feel sad because I am not the villain. The trolls are the villains. His words, not ours. Despite the fact that Chris got a trespassing notice from the game place. This is despite the fact that he nearly tried to run over Michael Snyder. This is despite the fact that his, uh, the things about his uh, love quest were known to the internet. And Chris straight up stating he wants to meet no black women at all. Because they spread, because they troll me. They make up the crap, they exaggerate or twist around my truth, my spoken word. And they give me wrongful mislabelings. I'm straight. Well, that didn't take him long to repeat that line again, did it? And they use damn Photoshop to make it look like otherwise. I want to go back to a normal life. <sighs> And one way I can do that 
to help go back to do that is to quell the bad reputation. So, again, I encourage everybody who looks me up on the internet, since there's nothing, since I have removed most everything about myself personally, don't believe anything on the internet about me at this point. Don't believe anything on the internet about me. Christian Weston Chandler of Rutgersville, Virginia, United States of America. I leave y'all with that. And I bid y'all a good day or evening, depending on the time zone. Chris indeed made great efforts to remove himself from the internet. Nevertheless, even though he stopped making YouTube videos, he began using an application for the handheld console Nintendo DSi called Flipnote Studio, which allowed users to create text-based or image-based drawings and frame-by-frame -frame animations by using a stylus. Users could share, comment on, and rate their creations via the online partner application Flipnote Hatina. His first Flipnote was a picture of Sonichu. His account was quickly discovered by trolls and shared on the quickie. On June 18th, Chris made another appearance at Fridays After 5, which seemingly had become a regular hangout of his. YouTube user Zero Archibunker Zero, who was aware of Christian, happened to also be there and took photos and videos of him. During the event, he wore his now signature denim vest, along with a red t-shirt which apparently read, I enjoy vagina. He was documented dancing during a rock band performance surrounded by children and some of their accompanying guardians. He would also take frequent breaks and sit down, playing with his Nintendo DSi, likely commenting on other users' flip notes or drawing his own. At a later point, he pulled back his t-shirt to reveal his bare abdomen and sports bra, on which WANT WOMAN was written in permanent marker. This seemed to have been a simplified reimagining of his attraction sign from nearly a decade prior. J just... Is that what he calls a normal life? Is that really... Because, it, again, it, it gives credence to the idea that I had that even if we were to believe that the internet never discovered him, how? How does he think this is n normal? Wearing a sports bra in public, wearing glass pedo glasses like that, having a shirt, and having a shirt saying, I enjoy vagina, and there are kids in this place... That would horrify... I'm surprised Chris never got... I'm, I'm absolutely amazed like the police were never called about this. Because, come on, like, there was a lot of people at this place that they must have realised that somebody walking around looking like this and having this sort of stuff written on your clothing is... strange. It's really, really strange. During the second half of June, Christian created near daily flip notes, supplanting YouTube with Flipnote Hatina as his creative outlet. His first animation, Ultimate Nightmare, was a simple two frame effort of a stick figure walking at a rate of an eighth of a millimeter per hour, as per the description. The video was also accompanied by a sustained high pitch synth whine. I'm glad somebody explained that. What the hell was that noise? Did Chris make that noise? On June 22nd, Chris watched a flipnote animation created by user 8-Bit about not engaging with trolls. 8-Bit had made the animation available to be downloaded and edited by other users, such as Chris, who re-uploaded a remixed version of the animation with some of his own alterations. For example, he changed overlaid text to say encouraging words about having a safe, happy life offline and not starting any relationships over the internet. In addition, the short clip of Sonic was replaced with Sonichu. Christian credited 8-Bit both in the description and in the final two cards. Two days later, he uploaded an original animation called Hippo on Your Head. Ah, you have a hippo on your head. Yeah. Well, don't just stand there while I later on me. Dear Sir. Hello. Signed, Buck Williams. He also created many sock puppet accounts so that he could give himself high ratings and views. On June 25th, Chris uploaded a two-part animation called 
Random Humor 1, which was largely copied from an episode of the cartoon series, The Charlie Brown and Snoopy Show. Some numbers can't be trusted. These are threes. Did you know that you can never trust threes? See? Threes turn sideways and pretend that they're M's or N's. And sometimes they turn themselves around to make you think that they're E's. Weird, huh? And sometimes they'll even lie on their backs and pretend they're W's. Come back. I'll show you some sixes. We like to pretend... I, I straight up love the fact that Chris actually wrote in the fact that this dude just straight up walked away when this lady would start r ranting about freeze. That was actually unironically quite clever that he did. That's. <laughs> wow. And then, noses. and then the dude just walks back. Okay. I'm about to see my eeks. Eeks. Eeks are very important if you're writing a story about a sexy, beautiful woman in barrel. So there's a sexy, beautiful woman living. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure I would call that sexy, no. Uh, balding uh, man, potato head with, with with a friggin' free on her chest. In her apartment, she was hanging in her room one day when suddenly a mouse came in. <laughs> she cried. If you want to write a good story about a sexy, beautiful woman in peril, you would have to be able to write a good eek. An ark probably would have killed me. Okay. Hey, dude, where's your sister? Where is right? I'm practicing my wise. Why? No, wise. I drew a whole row of them. Oh. My O's, wise. I see. I see. We're saving my I's and C's. These are wise. Don't you ever listen? Gee. Not G's, wise. Now pay attention. These are U's. They don't look like me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! What you hit me for? Because you're an idiot! Okay. Next, he uploaded a song concerning a farmer and a cow. Hey there, Moo, what you gonna do? Are you gonna give me some milk today? Moo! Moo! What? Kristen provided an impersonation of the character Cheese from the animated series Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I got chocolate milk. Tinkle tinkle in the car, you should be to use a jar. Thank you. Alex Cereal. Do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. On June 27th, Christian uploaded a series of factual statements about himself, following a popular flipnote hitting a trend at the time. These included, I am an honest, good, and decent man. I am a fun, loyal, sociable, and cool friend. And, I enjoy making women feel good. The video was soon removed due to the numerous inclusions of his real name, which was against Flipnote Hatina's guidelines. The next day, he joined in on a trend where a Flipnote Hatina user created a plain basis of two characters and tagged other users so they had to download the Flipnote and add their own personal touches to the image, completing it. They would in turn tag other users so they could contribute their own version of the sketch, and so on. Even though Chris wasn't tagged, he delivered his own take on the image anyway, morphing the anime-style characters into Sonichu and Rosechu. He then tagged 21 accounts who had left comments on his previous posts, many of whom possessed trollsome flipnote IDs, such as Ghost of Bob Chandler, Asperger Syndrome, and My Duck is Bent. However, Christian locked the animation, meaning that no one could actually contribute to it and continue the chain. Yeah, that's not exactly why they did... Come on, Chris, you should have realized it. Ugh, whatever. On June 29th, Chris published his 10th contribution to Flipnote, an animated recreation of an erotic dream of his, in which he and a woman are floating in a labyrinth filled with water. When they see each other, the stick figure representing Chris gets an erection. They instantly fall in love and move in closer for a kiss. Chris then wakes up, wishing to know that woman in real life. He then expels something from the lower half of his body, but given the limiting color palette and lack of detail, it is uncertain as to what it was meant to represent. Christian asked for the viewers to give it high ratings so that he could later upload the uncensored version. Since the explicitness of this animation was against the rules of the program, it was removed in minutes, though watchful trolls managed to download a copy of it in time. Ah, I see. Not long after, Chris hastily drew more clothing onto his characters and uploaded it again. This too was quickly taken down. 
He then made another version, which was the second iteration, but prefixed with a string of written statements. I want to note the Romantic Labyrinth flip note is not inappropriate. The people are clothed. There is no violence. There is no flashing. I will not be deleted from trolls who falsely report my romantic fantasy and my straightness as a violation. Just so those dang idiots can get away portraying me as a homosexual, which is wrong. Admins of FN Hatina who see my complaint here, please monitor all comments posted anywhere on FNH. It is very difficult to locate and block every single one, only to have them create new accounts only to continue trolling me like they've done so far. And please allow me to keep my account on FNH and allow my romantic labyrinth to stay as my own flipnote on the Hatina in the name of my right to speak of myself for myself and not be described by false rumors fabricated by the trolling stupid people. Thank you. Peace. Christian Weston Chandler. This version was removed quicker than the previous two. <laughs> the next day, Christian made an animation in the style of Anaglyph 3D inspired by another user's flipnote, on which he commented, Gayness. In this video, he impersonates four cartoon characters. Autobots, transform and roll out. I'm Meatweb, I'm a bomb of meat. Stop in the name of the law! Sorry about that, Sif. I dig, 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 dig. I eat me spinach every day. And now for something completely different. It's... Monty Pythons, flying elephants! Uh. He also made a video tagging supposed female users on the site, asking for ratings if they thought he looked cute, based on the low quality black and white photo provided, which was converted to be usable on Flipnote Studio. In addition to the Flipnote Hatina users, Christian tagged two past women in his life by their online usernames, The Wallflower and Jackie. This animation was also soon forcibly removed. He shortly closed comments for all his flip notes and followed up with a plain, silent, text-based effort explaining his reasoning. My apologies for deleting and disabling the comments on my flip notes, but I am doing this to clear the slanderings from the trolls, all of whom are being ignored and are not slash will not be getting any attention at all and to teach them that they all need to stop their harassments and reevaluate their lives for their benefit. No harm will be done. They need to understand that useless pranks at other people's expense and such misdemeanors are just that. Useless! It is not funny. Peace. Christian Weston Chandler. Was this also deleted? This too was promptly deleted due to his inclusion of his name. The recent flip note that mentioned Jackie Romy encouraged the troll behind that persona to re-engage in email communications with Christian, at first angry with him for mentioning her, but after his reply, she calmed down and revealed that she sometimes thought of him and formally resumed chatting with him. Oh boy. On July 2nd, Chris re-uploaded most of his previously deleted flip notes, including his sexually explicit romantic labyrinth. After these numerous violations, his account and Nintendo DSi were banned. The next day, Christian, under the guise of his own troll persona, Jenkins Jinkies, created an article on the quickie called Coffee Place, which only vaguely referenced Bob and Chris Chandler, and mostly 